Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live at the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is a model, hula dancer, lifeguard, and now the famous actor of the big blockbuster movie Aquaman. He is Kekoa Kekumano, and today we are going beyond movies. Hey, Kekoa. How you doing, Rusty? Good. It was so much fun being a judge with you in the Miss Cosmos pageant oh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. For sure. That was awesome, man. Was... I've never been a judge before. Yeah. <laughs> first time. It was fun. And then I didn't know that, you know, you and I both grew up in Mililani. Mililani Town. Yeah. You like growing Mil up Bill, there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Represent. <laughs> now, what school did you go to? So, I went to Kumamea Schools. Kapalama. Okay. And um, I got in in sixth grade. I was on the waiting list. Okay. So I tried out fourth grade, got in sixth grade, and uh, I was just pretty much just so stoked to get in. My parents were crying. We had a party. Oh, yeah. It was huge. And then I graduated 2016, which was about two, three years ago so far. So, yeah, two, three years out of high school right now. So how was your experiences at, at Kamehameha? Well, I mean, Kamehameha really grew me as a person because as far as i'm concerned that all my friends in public school were kind of just like kind of skipping class <laughs> and you know they're they're doing their own thing and i was like i wanted to you know i wanted to kind of be like them but i couldn't because <laughs> we're on a mountain there's like 10 guard shacks there's like hundreds of security guards and there's like cameras watching you so there you know it definitely disciplined me made me stay in school and uh it made me really just kind of focus on my schoolwork and study and try not to get in too much trouble. Good. So. And then what college did you end up going to? So right after high school, I got into Grand Canyon University and that's located in Phoenix, about 20 minutes away from Arizona State. And when I went there, my whole, the reason why I went there wasn't a reason most people, you know, <laughs> like parents want to hear, but I went there because it was like a fun party school. It was close to, you know, a lot of just, just the action. And I went there with seven other of my classmates that we graduated all together. And so all of us, eight Hawaiians, we all go <laughs> and we all stayed in the same dorm. We had like four of us in one dorm room, four of us in the other and right next to each other. So it was just like, I only, I only lasted a semester. <laughs> I, I, I came home. It was like, it was crazy. It was definitely a fun experience. And uh, I, I, I had so much fun. I, I yeah, it was definitely fun. It was a fun time. So, Kekoa, tell me about your family. So, I'm, I'm the oldest. I got two younger brothers. Okay. And so, they, they're still in school, still in high school. My mom and my dad, they, they met in college. So, my mom was going to, I think, HBU at the time. And, okay. And my mom is actually from, she was born in Singapore. She was raised in Canada. And my dad is from here, so he's born and raised from here. And so that's my that's kind of where you know we kind of come to. And we live in Milani, and I just moved out recently to Kaimuki uh, for work. Got it. Yeah, they still live over there. And yeah, I mean, we we grew up pretty normal, happy family, and <laughs> and everything was smooth, everything smooth sailing with us. You nice. Know? So yeah. Okay, now Kekoa, what was your first job that you ever had? My first job. For me was when I was a uh, construction, I worked construction. Okay. And my, my neighbor, my uncle Chief, he has his own construction company, Chief Builders. And so I, as a little kid, I always wanted to just go to work. I always wanted to have my own money for some reason. It was just, it was just a weird thing that inside of me, I, I like to be like, you know, a worker. Yeah. And uh, I asked my uncle, I said, hey, uncle, you know, I was 15 years old. And I was just about to get my license and I wanted to buy my own car. <laughs> so I said, uncle, I, I, can I work for you? And he goes, yeah, I use, I'll put you to work tomorrow. So I never forget the first day of work. I, I have a three XL uh, construction shirt on because okay. he, he, that's the only one that fit me. <laughs> so I got, you know, hanging down to my knees. <laughs> I'm wearing cargo shorts down to my ankles <laughs> and uh, I'm coming to work and I, I'm talking story with all the construction guys and I had, you know, and they just made me, you know, set up the work site 
and you know just do things around pick up rubbish and you know give them the tools or whatnot work. you know it was so i was so exhausted by the end of that day when we ended half day it was only a half day too. It even a full day. We, we got home at like one o'clock in the afternoon i was so tired as soon as i got home i fell i fell down in the front yard and i just and i just I went to sleep. I went to sleep. I was that tired. And then the only time I woke up was at 8 o'clock at night. My dad's coming out the house telling me the sprinklers are on and get inside the house before you get all wet. So I was like, you know, I would never forget how, how much hard work that was. It, was. it was definitely my first job, hard work all the way from the start. Yeah. And then let's, let's talk about Aquaman. Um, yeah. How did you end up getting that role in Aquaman? Well, the, the, what had happened was... There was a casting director or agent. Her name's Rachel. Yeah. And Rachel really, really does, you know, takes care of me and she really likes me. And so she ended up getting giving my agent a call, Lashana from Bliss. And she says, you know, there's a there's a role coming up, a big, big movie role. They didn't tell me what it was. So I was just kinda like, okay, I'll do it. So they give you a little script, right, to read off of and audition for it and I, I read it and i was just like it sounds like like i'm gonna be in like a medieval times movie or something and i was like i didn't want to do trident. it yeah i yeah. was like the train I, I didn't even know what a train was <laughs> yeah. and then and then i auditioned for it um and then i auditioned and they called me back and they kept calling me back i'm like these guys probably got the wrong guy i don't even know if they got the right number you know oh, they yeah. keep calling me back i'm like what the heck finally they called me back and then i got called back by at least like five six times to keep auditioning giving me new scripts every time. Finally, I was at work one day and they called me like, you know, Kiko, you got, you got Aquaman, you got oh. with Jason Momoa. Actually, actually the first time I auditioned, she told me, this is Aquaman, yeah. Jason Momoa. And then I was like, okay, now I really want to try. <laughs> you started the, you know, every uh, audition after, I was trying a little bit harder and then I ended up getting that role. So, so. Kiko, what did you do to prepare for that role? Well, when I found out I got the role, I was like, I got to I want to look like, you know, solid, you know, yeah. I want to look good on screen. And I went to the gym every day, two times a day. And I was working out was training and I just wanted my physique to be good. Cause for me, you know, if I feel good, then, you know, I, I, everything goes well. And, and so I, I'm more comfortable. So I wanted to make sure, you know, my physique was in shape. I was, I was ready to go. And that, that was a lot for me. It was the training. I was training a lot. And I was definitely getting my mind right to go off to Australia to film. So how was your experiences with Jason Momoa? Well, Jason Momoa is just, he's a larger than life guy. Yeah. When you first meet him, he's just like, he's just the most welcoming person. And I think cause he knew I was from Hawaii, he was even more like, yeah. oh, what's up brother? <laughs> so it was real like, it was real easy going to get along with him. And he definitely took me in and he just kind of just, Talk story with me, invited me over to his house. You know, we we had barbecue, we cruised, and this is all in Australia. So he definitely took care of me, and he was just all around, just very welcoming, friendly, nice, just an awesome guy. Such a real guy. Oh yeah, for sure. He's real down to earth. Like you know, you could really talk to him about anything. Yeah. And he definitely has been all around the world, oh, and he yeah. knows a lot of stuff. So <laughs> you know, he was definitely super, like just cool to be around. Just yeah. Cool to be around. How, how was it behind the scenes, you know, when you had to prepare for stuff behind the scenes? How was that like? Well, behind the scenes, there's a lot of stuff going on that you never see on the, in the movies. Yeah. So you, behind the scenes, let's say I did a, uh, the first, first scene that we shot was on the beach. And right, out, right as soon as they said cut, the camera shut off. There's about, you know, I felt like it was like 100 people rushing into me just, you know, you got my hair lady, you got my makeup lady, you got my voice coach, you got the guy showing me how to, you know, fight and, and you know, and you contacts. Got, yeah, you got the contacts, <laughs> you got people touching you, poking you, you know, doing all these <laughs> things to you. And you're just like, holy crap, you're getting all kind of just tossed around. And, and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of overwhelming because you're not used to it. And that's why a lot of the times I give cre uh, a lot of credit to actors because and it's not easy, you know, I mean, unless you like getting touched by 50 different people <laughs> at once, you know, it's definitely an experience because you got to just stay calm. You got to just listen, and, you know, just let them do their thing because they're they they want what's best for you in a sense. Yeah. So they want to make you look number one. 
So you you know, at the same time, you'd be like, okay, thank you. Just do whatever you got to do. You know? So, so Kekoa, what was the, what did you learn most about that experience in Aquaman? Well, I learned a lot, but I'd probably say the thing that I learned most was, kind of, it was kind of for me, it was kind of just like, just stay calm through everything, you know, and especially when a lot of things are, and there's a lot of pressure on you and a lot of just things that you're not used to, you're not comfortable with. The number one thing I always tell myself is just stay as calm as possible because when you, well, at least for me, when I start to freak out, things just kind of start getting a little crazy. <laughs> Other people are freaking out and it's like a whole fiasco. So like for me, I was like, hey, you know what, Kiko, just stay calm. Everything's going to be okay. You know, you train hard for this. You know, you, you, you make sure you got your lines down and just be yourself. But at the same time, you got to act, perform, and just, you know, do you do your best, you know, but... And have, and have and fun, have fun doing exactly, it. Yeah. Exactly, That's the number one thing, you know what I mean? I'm going to have fun. You know? You're a fun guy. Oh, thanks, thanks. So, Kekoa, you know, when you got into Hawaii Five-O, how did you get that role in Hawaii Five-O? So, when it started off, uh, from the very beginning, I was never really into the acting thing at yeah. all. And I kind of was just like, I didn't even want to do that. But my mom was like, no, I want you to be in the movies. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I was like, okay, mom, well, I'll do it for you, you know. So yeah, my cousins are MMA fighters. They own a gym. And uh, one day, this, this, uh, this director of a movie he went to film, he came in looking for a teenage MMA local fighter. And uh, my mom made me audition for the role. And through that... I ended up getting the lead role for that, and it was the first thing I ever got. And through that, uh, the connections, I met Brent Onbe, oh. uh, casting, di uh, casting director. And uh, he remembered me when a role came up for Hawaii Five-O. I don't even think it was a reoccurring role at the time. He told me, hey, you know, Kikola, there's a role I think you'd be great in auditioning for. And once again, I was like, I don't really want to do it, you know? I was just like, uh, I'd rather go hang out with my friends and, and, and cruise. I got to go to this audition. So my mom's like, no, you're going. You're going. I don't care what. Dragging me by my ear. I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. We'll do it. So I ended up doing it. And then I got the role for that. It's like crazy sometimes. I don't even like, it was really weird because I was just, I felt like I was just reading the lines. And they're just like, that's so awesome. I was like, really? Because I just feel like I'm reading, you know? I was like, oh, okay, thanks. How many episodes were you on? Well, as of right now, I think I've been on about three or four seasons. Yeah. And I think out of those seasons, probably about 10, 11 episodes. Yeah. I, I might be wrong, but yeah, I think that's so. That's a lot. It, it was because after the first episode, they, I guess they made my character reoccurring. Yeah. So I was just like, oh. Sweet. I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> I was like, okay, we do it. <laughs> so what, what do you think is the biggest difference between acting in movies and TV shows? Uh, for me, the biggest difference that I noticed was the everything, the fast pace. Because TV shows are quick. Yeah. They got so many episodes, so many seasons, so many peoples and extras and all these things going around that, you know, when they shoot a scene... They're like, okay, we'll shoot it a couple more times, but we're not going to waste our time on it, you know? It's just, it's quick, quick. The movie is like, my scene in the movie was about like a minute and a half, maybe two minutes long. It took from 5 o'clock in the morning till, you know, 8 o'clock at night just to film just that. And so a lot of the times TV shows, they can, they can do their filming, you know, and they can knock out way, like a lot more scenes than a movie can. So that's like the big difference. TV shows are quick. Movies take a longer time. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. And Kikoi, you're, you're a, becoming a famous model now. <laughs> How did you first get into modeling? So I, it was through acting. So it was a lot of like, you know, through, through acting, a lot of connections. And I feel like, you know, the connections really help because people remember you and you make a good impression on them. And the modeling kind of just came through with, uh, some of my friends were like, hey, you know, you want to do like a fashion show? And I was like, I'll do it if there's money, you know, like, <laughs> and if there's money, okay, let's do it. Is there girls? You know, like, my, my mindset is totally different, you know, it's like offset. So like, there's like, yeah, bro, let's try them out, try them out. I'm like, okay, can I keep the clothes? Yeah. Like, so, you know, it was like, definitely it was cool to do the fashion shows and, and, uh, the photo shoots are cool, and I look at the pictures, I'm like, oh, that's pretty sick. I'm going to post that one, you know? Like, it was, uh, it's cool. 
definitely a cool thing. Well, everyone thinks that it's glamorous, but there's so much hard work uh, that goes into it. But you, you prefer doing fashion shows? Yeah, for me, fashion shows, they're a lot more fun. They're kind of upbeat, you know, you can kind of just play it off. Yeah. And at least the ones that I did and, and, and all the people around there, it's, you know, they're, they enjoy the same things as you and they're real and everyone's kind of cool and nice. And like, uh, for example, Hinano, I love doing the Hinano fashion shows and just uh, mainly because I love the Hinano clothing line. I, that's my favorite. Hinano is like what I rep, I love. And so when I get to do those, I'm just totally stoked. I would do it for free, honestly. Yeah. You know, just to you know, have my face next to a, such a great brand like Hinano. Uh, another recent one I did was Hawaii's Finest. And, yeah. You know, Hawaii's Finest is such an awesome brand. And the owner of Hawaii's Finest, he's just a, such an awesome guy. And it's just uh, all these local brands. I like doing it the most because it's, it's, it's what I wear. It's what I am, you know, so... I'm not really, you know, faking it. It's like, this is the real deal, deal it's man. The, yeah. It's the real kick off. I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wear this on the street, you know, <laughs> going in a restaurant. So, yeah. Now, you also dance hula. Uh, yeah. And yeah. you love dancing hula. I do. Tell me about that. It all started off, I was in high school, my senior year, football season ended, and my friend goes, hey, you should dance. Um, you know, uh, you should try the chant and dance class that we have at Comeville Schools. Uh, Kumu Kaleo Trinidad, he runs that, those classes. And I was just like, ah, I don't really want to do that, you know? <laughs> and he goes, no, bro, you, you, you can pull plenty of girls. Man. You can pull so much girls. Like, Hula is the one, you know? Yeah. You, you look good. You're all flexing and stuff. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm in. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let's do Hula. So I started off dancing and... Uh, and then I just kind of fell in love with it. I, I really enjoyed the culture and, and everything behind it. And um, I danced for Kumu Kaleo's uh, class in high school. And when I, when I graduated, you know, I, um, I ended up going to Tihati's oh, to dance. Oh, yeah. They're very great. Yeah. All right, Kiko, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond movies. For sure. All right. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Kekoa Kekumano. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, live at 5. I'll see you there. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. If you've seen the big blockbuster movie Aquaman, you will definitely recognize my special guest who played the teenage Aquaman. He is Kekoa Kekumano, and today we are going beyond movies. Kekoa, you're also a lifeguard, and that's what you're doing now. Yes. How did you get into being a lifeguard? Well, I... The audition, or you have to try out yeah. to be, uh, become a city and county ocean safety officer. So they hold the tryouts at Alamoana Beach Park. Okay. And I got word that they're, they're holding a trial, and I just immediately started training for the trial because the trial itself, it starts off as a it's physical. So you have to do uh, three tests. Oh. And it's a thousand yard run, thousand yard swim. You got to do it under a time limit. You got to run 100 yards, swim 100 yards, run 100 yards under a time limit. You got to do a board paddle 400 yards under, you know, four minutes. Wow. So I, I, uh, I was always in love with the water. And I just thought, you know, this would be perfect for me because I was a beach boy in Waikiki. I was working as a beach boy in Waikiki. And I thought to myself, you know what, if I could, you know, I do rescues as a beach boy. You know, people take out the boards. They can't come back in. So I was doing rescues already. And I thought, you know, I might as well, you know, get, get paid for it and, yeah. and, and, you know, go there. So I was like, man, I really want to become a lifeguard. And I trained and I ended up getting in. Uh, and we just, our, my recruit class graduated this past May. 
So we're coming up on about a year now, close to a year of me be, being with the city and county ocean safety. Have you saved anybody? I did. Yeah, I saved a few. Uh, re we had a few rescues I had. Um, we, I'm based on in Waikiki, Waikiki, okay. Alamoana side, so uh, District 1. And probably, like, I would say it's very common for a lot of the tourists to come to, you know, Waikiki and not think there's any, you know, dangers or whatnot. But there, there is actually a, a bunch. And there's strong currents, you know, there's sudden drop-offs, there's, you know, slippery rocks, and there's a lot of things. And, uh, and especially in the summertime, we had these big salt swells that come in. And there's just, uh, the thing about Waikiki is there's just so much people. Yeah. The amount of people on that beach, there's yeah. that stretch of beach is just crazy. It's the most populated beach in the entire world. Yeah. And so the lifeguards, we, uh, all the lifeguards that I work with, they do an awesome job with keeping everyone safe. And uh, the, just the uh, District 1 itself, we, we pride ourselves in, you know, making sure everyone that visits the islands can go home safely. And it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty awesome feeling. I remember one time I, I uh, was working at Waikiki, and it was, uh, it was a day where uh, we had king tide, so the tide was really high. I had, like, there was a Japanese couple swim right in front of my tower, and... Uh, you know, there's about 100, 200 other people in the water. And then you just hear, help, help, you know. So I look at them and run down, sprint out, out there. And uh, there's people, you know, kind of separating away because when people start to drown, they start to drag other people with oh, them. Yeah. So a lot of people try and kind of distance themselves. I get there. And uh, so I got the, uh, the, the wife on the board. I got the husband on top of her. Then I'm on top of the husband. Oh. And, and I paddle all of them back. And... Uh, you know, I think I was the first rescue I ever had and I, I saved two of them at one time Go on to the beach and everyone's clapping and yelling and the Japanese couple were so grateful You know, they tried to give me money after wow. and I told them I said, you know I said I don't want you know, there's no need for that. You know, I appreciate it But this is Hawaii, you know, I want to make sure that when you guys come here, you guys are safe This is all about aloha and I said, you know, thank you so much But you know, it's from the heart, you know, yeah. so it means a lot you know, both ways for both both parties. Oh, that's impressive, Keiko. Yeah. And Keiko, I have to ask, what irritates you lifeguards? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know, uh, the lifeguards, we're always here for, for, you know, if you ask any questions and for preventatives and stuff. A lot of times we get a lot of, <laughs> You know, questions that kind of be right in front of people's faces, kind of just like, you know, is there jellyfish today? And there's three signs right in front of them and say there's a jellyfish. You know, that one kind of like gets, it's repetitive, yeah. especially working in Waikiki. You're yeah. talking to them and it's just over and over. Or a lot of times we, we tell people like, hey, don't go over there. There's a, there's a strong shore break. And what do they do? Go over there, they go over there, and then they get hurt. So it's like you know the preventatives when people don't listen to them, and we we constantly tell them, tell them, and then they get hurt. It's just like come on, man, you know. Now you're making our job a little bit more difficult when easily you could have just walked away. Yeah. So that's something that kind of gets to us sometimes. But no matter what the situation is, we're always there for the public and just keeping everyone safe. No, and that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. What is your passion? What What do you want to really pursue? In your life well my dream and i guess you can call it a passion too would be to be a firefighter wow and that's great i think since i was a little kid i've always wanted to be a firefighter and 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 i think a firefighter to me is a, a real hero a real life hero not too many people in this world would go into a, a burning house or a, a building that's falling down you know but these firefighters they have so much bravery that it's just something that I can't, I, I cannot, you know, I just admire so much that I can't look away from. I just, and I want to be those people because I feel like that is where I feel the most happiest is when I help out other people. It's just, especially, you know, as I start off being a lifeguard, yeah. you know, when there's big waves, you know, most people will, you know, swim away from it. But if there's someone in distress, we swim out to it. Yeah. And I think, you know, being a lifeguard and a firefighter, they both have a lot of similarities. And firefighting to me is something that is just a dream of mine.
Well, you know, with your character and your values and your disciplines, it wouldn't surprise me if someday you become the fire chief. Oh, that, that, yeah. that'd be sick. I, would, <laughs> I can't, I mean, be a firefighter in general, I'd make my dream come true, be a chief. I, I don't even know. It's, yeah. There's nothing greater than that, <laughs> you know, for now, sure. Now, Kekoa, who is somebody that impacted your life the most? Uh, somebody that impacted my life would would probably be uh, my my great grandfather, my papa, wow. and I actually never got to meet him before. I I he passed away a long time before I was born. But the thing about him is, I hear stories um, that are passed down to you know my dad and and you know my uncles, and they all tell me what kind of a person he was, how awesome of a person he was, how friendly. You know, he's like the mayor. You know, yeah. and uh, the legacy that he left. For my last name, the Kekumanos, is, is huge for me. And, and, you know, my tutu always tells me, you know, don't shame our name. And uh, for me, I take a lot of pride in being a Kekumano. There's not much of us left. In fact, I think it's just me and my two brothers were the last ones to carry that name. And so I think it's, a, it's an honor to hold something like that. And for me, I want to carry that legacy down. And when people hear the last name Kekumano, they're, you know, they shake their, they, you know, they're like very... Approve, they approve of it and, and they're proud, you know. And, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure that he's very, very proud of you yeah. right now. I hope so, yeah. I mean, the, you're doing some great stuff. You've yeah, achieved a lot you. of stuff already. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Now, I know that you're working on my book, Beyond the Lines. Yes. How are you liking it so far? Well, I, I really enjoy it because I, have, I, I can really um, connect to it. But there was one part in the book where I read where uh, it came across, it's, you, you wrote, um, a leader is not born, but is made. Yep. And I think that's pretty true. And then you pulled a, a, a fact saying how Bill Belichick, the you know, head coach of the Patriots, he uh, such a great coach. Yep. All of his assistant coaches, they, he brought them up and you know, they went their own ways and they had their own success as far as becoming their own head coach of a team and whatnot. And I think those coaches pulled things from Bill Belichick and pulled things from other people to make themselves successful. And that's what I try and do is I pull things you know, from my dad, how he works so hard. And I pull things from my uncles. I pull things from my mom, how she's so caring. And I pull things from people on the TV show. I'm just like, ah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I try and make it myself. And I really re related to that in the book. When you, when I, as soon as I read it, I was like, "Holy cow!" I, I thought I was the only guy that did that, you know. But you know, it's, it was cool. It was cool to read something like that. When I was like, "Man, I, I really have a connection to that." Well, Kekoa, that's what I did. Yeah, I know. That's it. I was like, "Geez, man, this is this is awesome." I think a lot of leaders, you know, they through the past experiences, they recognize what some good leaders do, what some bad leaders do, and then they they use that for themselves. Yeah. And then you put your own twist on it when exactly. you become a leader. Exactly. I, and I think that's, that's just awesome that, you know, we're able to do that. Yeah. And sure. Kekoa, success is, is a, you know, everyone defines success in a different way. Yeah. What do you think success is? Well, you know, to me, I would say success is it's just being happy with yourself, not caring what, you know, others think. I mean... It, a lot of people, I feel like, look at success and say, man, that guy's successful because he lives in this nice big house, got 25 cars and a lot. Mm -hmm. But if that person in there is, is, is unhappy, then how successful really is he, you know? But for the guy who's living in a small little shack and he, he rides a horse to work every day, but he's the happiest guy in the world, yeah. he's, he's more successful than anybody because he, he's happy with himself and he's content with life. And I feel like success isn't measured by all the things that you have, but more or less kind of like inside of what, you know, you feel and how you feel, you know. That, for me, that's just how it is. No, that makes sense because yeah. there's a lot of people that have a lot of material possessions yeah. and they're miserable. Exactly. And some people that really don't have much at all, but yeah. they're the happiest. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, cool. Before we wrap, I want to ask you one more thing. Okay. What's something that you want to do that you just haven't been able to do yet? Oh, Okay. Uh, I, would, I would say, for me, I, I've always wanted to go to Italy. Okay. Uh, my, Why? Uh, my dad is half Hawaiian, half Italian. 
so I'm like a quarter Italian. But I feel like I'm 100% Italian sometimes, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, I want to go to Italy. I, I want to experience that culture. I see how beautiful it is. And I, I haven't ever been to Europe before, so I've always wanted to go back and, and check out the Vatican, the Rome, Venice, all these cities and stuff. I, I've, that's just something I really got to do. And I think I might, I'm, I'm going to try to do it sometime soon because, yeah. yeah, it's about time. Yeah. Yeah, it's about time I should go. Well, okay, cool. I've been to Italy. Yeah. And I loved it. And I just know you're definitely going to love it. <laughs> you're definitely going to love it. Yeah, I never heard any bad things about it. Yeah. So I want to go. <laughs> okay, cool. I want to thank you for being on the show yeah, today. Thank you for having me, Rusty. I appreciate it so much. You are a great guy. Thank you. I want more Kikoas in the world. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. The world will be a better place. It. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kiko. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii and a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit my website, rustykomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Kekoa and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.